it could be getting much easier for rural commuters to travel to Lafayette. I'm Abby Breidenbach and I'll tell you how. And a busy day in the weather world with an active radar and active tropics. I'll talk about all of that in my full weather forecast. Live from the KATC TV3 studios, this is the KDNS News Channel at 6. Thanks for joining us. The radar is still active across Acadiana. Yeah, those storms moving farther west in Acadiana. Let's check in with meteorologist Daniel Phillips for the exact track tonight. Daniel. Jim, thanks. Yeah, a busy afternoon. A lot of showers, a lot of thunderstorms across the area. A few more to get through as well as we look out up towards the north and out over towards the east. You can see those showers moving in. A quick rundown of where we are seeing all of the wet weather right now. Mostly north of the interstate, and that's going to be out through Allen Parish. Kinder, you guys getting ready to see a pretty nasty storm just northwards of Ville Platte as well along 167 in between Ville Platte and Turkey Creek. Morrow and Bunky, some heavy storms making their way through your area. Gusty winds as well. We've seen the gusts get up to about 40 miles an hour, 50 at times. And then looking eastward, sound over towards New Rose. This is getting ready to cross the basin. That storm likely going to continue to progress westward. So uh, moving into St. Landry Parish here, probably the next 20, 30 minutes. And then down south of the interstate, you can see it out through Jefferson Davis Parish. For Jennings and Crowley, it was busy for you guys just a little while ago. Things easing up now. Iowa, you've got a heavy downpour and a little more on the way. And then the heavy stuff finally going to be pushing into Calcasieu as well as Cameron Parish. Once the next round of storms makes its way through St. Landry, that'll likely be it for the rest of the evening. Another round coming up again for tomorrow, though we'll talk about that. Plus, we will address the tropics. That's all here in just a little bit. All right, Daniel, thanks. Breaking news in Lafayette Parish. Two separate crashes are backing up traffic on I-10 East and Scott. The first crash involves an SUV that flipped near mile marker 97 after hydroplaning. No one was injured in that crash. The second involves a flipped over 18 wheeler near mile marker 96. State troopers are on their way to that crash. So far, no reports of any injuries. And right now, Bruce, our police are working a crash on Highway 90 near Morgan Street, where an 18 wheeler lost a load of large pipe it was carrying. Crews are on the scene trying to free the cab's driver, uh, the driver from the cab. Traffic in the area is being diverted. He has since been, oh, let me update you, he has since been freed and has been taken to a hospital. No word yet on his condition. One lane of the highway is closed. Happening now in Ville Platte, police are searching for a man who fled from them while being transported to the city jail from the sheriff's office. Officials say Kenneth Perkins Jr. was being transported on misdemeanor charges when he escaped from an officer and stole a bike. Call him, call police if you see him. In Franklin, two people are dead in what police are calling a murder-suicide. Police say Kenneth Smith Jr. shot and killed April Charles in an apartment before turning the gun on himself. Charles died at an area hospital. Smith was pronounced dead at the scene. Tonight, KTC investigates why a man accused of shooting a woman in Lafayette this week was out of jail after pleading guilty to shooting another woman in 2015. Craig Vallier was sentenced to eight years in prison for the 2015 case, but according to DOC records, he was released in November after getting credit for time served and for treatment and rehab classes he took while in prison. Vallier is now accused of shooting a woman during a domestic dispute this week. He's facing an attempted second degree murder charge in that case. Staying in Lafayette, a juvenile is under arrest for allegedly stealing a car and then crashing to a home on West Willow Street. Police at the juvenile fled during a traffic stop and lost control before crashing. The advocate reports two people were inside when that crash happened. They are not injured. Some commuters could soon have an easy and affordable way to get to Lafayette. LCG, in partnership with the Acadiana Planning Commission, is expected to approve a program that would provide public transportation from Crowley, Rain, Doosan, and Scott into Lafayette. Abby Breidenbach joins us live now at the Rosa Parks Transportation Center with more on the possibilities in this program. Abby. Jim, this is a pilot program being made possible by a USDA grant. The grant is aimed at helping rural residents commute into bigger cities. If it's approved, residents of Acadia and Western Lafayette Parish can expect four trips in the morning and four in the afternoon to and from Lafayette. A two-way pass would cost $5 and a 12-ride pass would cost $20. The grant funds six months of the regional transit, and if it's popular, the Planning Commission hopes to expand the routes farther. The overall goal that we're looking at is 
basically creating an opportunity for a regional transit, transit that would not only serve Acadia Parish, but also St. Landry Parish, St. Martin Parish, uh, Iberia Parish, things of those, those natures. We want to look at the capability of being able to connect all of the Acadiana parishes. The ordinance would be up for approval at next week's LCG meeting on Tuesday. If the ordinance is approved, buses will start running in mid-August, just in time for school to start back up. Live in Lafayette, Abby Breidenbach, KATC TV3. In Welsh, the old Capital One building will soon house some city offices. The town has finalized the purchase of the old bank for $185,000. Officials say the town government has outgrown the current city hall, leading them to buying that building. I think it's going to be a nice site for the city hall, easy for people to come to, easy for them to pay their bill, and for our workers, it'll be a much a larger facility where it'll be better for them too. Happening tomorrow, the Vermilion Parish School Board will discuss a lawsuit related to the arrest of teacher Daisha Hargrave. In January, Hargrave was arrested during a board meeting. The lawsuit filed by Attorney General Jeff Landry claims her arrest violated the state's open meetings law. Landry wants a judge to nullify the superintendent's pay raise and other actions approved at that meeting. Next tonight, a Scott farmer is retiring, but not before helping to feed the homeless in Acadiana. Josh Many with his story, new tonight at 6. So we have been... Uh...